Braxton Garrett on the bump for the Marlins 25th start of the season coming off a loss against the Dodgers game two Saturday of the doubleheader but his last five starts two and one with a 257 ERA three earned runs in six innings but no walks yet again for the first pitch swung on and lined into right field that's a solid single to open the game for C.J. Abrams on the very first pitch thrown by the left-hander Braxton Garrett. So Abrams is aboard with a line shot in the right. Came to the plate, hitting at 252. Now is it in five straight games? This one bounced left side for Berger. Kind of a double clutch to look at Abrams, who was taking a big turn around second base, but they do get the out at first. Runner in scoring position for the Nats. Yeah, sometimes you wonder a double clutch because was he looking at Abrams or did he not have a good grip? He does take the peak right there and another peak. I just think he was trying to make sure he had the right grip. Abrams to third, throw is low, and having to come forward was Berger to get it. And CJ head first right in behind him, and that's number 34. A great job by CJ. Great take. Give himself a chance right here. And the 3 2 again, tapped out to short. Abrams will score on a very slow bouncer. The value of an ultra fast leadoff man manufacturing the first run of the game. Well, ultra fast, but ultra smart, too. Two great jumps on the bases. One was a successful stolen base, and then a great read. The Nationals won, and the Marlins nothing. Joanna Doan, third career start against Miami, trying to beat them for the first time. Yeah, four start coming off the one just the other day with the four inning appearance. And a towering fly ball. Short left field. So each leadoff guy swinging first pitch. And it turned out a lot better for the man who just caught that one. Jorge Soler, the batter. Soler, high fly ball, shallow center, long run in. Who's it going to be? It's going to be nobody as it drops in. Soler on his way to second base. Paul and Thomas both near it. And now Thomas is down in center field. Both outfielders are terrific outfielders. Lane Thomas in, in right field. Both were converging on that ball, and it looked and appeared as if both could have made the catch. So many times in the outfield, when two players are calling at the same time, it's, it's really hard to tell. That's why you have to take a little bit of a peek, a little peripheral vision. They're both calling. They both have a chance. Ooh. And then Thomas pulls off and catch, catches a piece of call right here. They're both calling for it. You have to have a little peripheral vision, and out of the corner of the eye, you have to look at that other outfielder. And the bottom line in that case, the center fielder is the captain. He takes charge. When in doubt, let the center fielder catch it. In the air to left, Demaro Vargas makes the catch, and Soler has to go back to second base. Here's an example of that high fastball where pitchers have been trying to work Luis Arise. A little bit under. And a high pop left side for Abrams. And that's out number three. Marlon Strand one, one nothing. There's Ildemaro Vargas, the left fielder. Into left, De La Cruz sliding catch for the third out. A lot of good defense behind Braxton Garrett tonight. Nice play by Brian De La Cruz, who records a couple of outs and a perfect top of the fourth inning for Braxton Garrett. Here's Alex Call. Only two hits in the game, both by the Nets. How about three hits in the game, all by the Nets? This ball hooking away from De La Cruz. And he's just too far away to make any kind of play at second base against the speedy Alex Call. Alex's last three at bats, homer, single, and this double. And that's off the pitcher. Garrett unable to do much with it, but the ball was rolling towards second. And Alex Call decided to stay on an infield knock by Michael Chavis. No, Braxton Garrett right away, as soon as he turned around, he said, don't even come out here, I'm good. This was a line drive, looked like he oh, hit him off the His fell on the mound. It was Chavis's helmet that fell off up the first base line, but boy, he almost, oof. It was a line drive off the heel of the glove and actually knocked the glove off. Half of an inch down more, that ball gets caught. Throw to second, and they picked him off. Paul got a little too far off the bag. And Braxton Garrett with the pickoff. Nationals not going to look at it. We play on. And the Nats have their fifth hit of the night. See if they can make something of it with Carter Keyboom hit by a pitch and a grounder to short. One nothing Nats. The pitch. Carter oh. goes deep left field. Big fly. <laughs> See you later. A dribbler and a blast. And the Nats lead by three. Keyboom. That ball was smoked. 
Second homer, 105 off the bat. Carter Keyboom gives the Nats a little bit of breathing room right here. Get that wig on them. And they've been held without a hit through their first five trips to the plate this evening. The Nationals lead 1-0. Complete control right now. Up the middle. And through. We'll see how they score that one. They got through both Adone and Abrams, and Jazz is aboard. You know, under normal circumstances. That's a base hit. Well, if it hit the bag, it's got to be a hit because that's a redirect. Well, the pizza box slightly. might have gotten this one. Ball away and just off. Is it kicked back just enough? It has that that look like it's going to get keep going away from C.J. Abrams, and then it kicks just enough and throws you off. All right, there it is. It's still there. And we'll bring in the league's leading hitter. And there's a clean hit for Miami. Over to third easily, Chisholm. And after five and two thirds. Yoan Adon finally gives up a sure base hit. Yeah, backdoor curveball stays up just a little bit. It was edge of the plate. Throws the hands right at that. It's over. So second and third now with two outs here in the top of the seventh inning. Manessis will get his crack at the lefty as the Nationals lead 3-0. Joey Manessis is going to drive in two. Out to the gap in left center. Chavis home. Thomas easily. And Joey's going to add to that team leading RBI total. 72 for him. Joey Raker is back. Bear turns on one. Heading to the right field corner. Headed off the top of the wall. Manessis heading for the plate. Ruiz for second to throw there. He's going to be out. Fortunately, the run scored. Ruiz slowed down to make sure when he was tagged out that Manessis was allowed to score. 6 0 Nationals. Good hustle by Manessis. The Nationals with a big inning score three runs. And the Nationals do indeed have a 6 0 lead over the Marlins. Back to back singles for the Marlins. Leading off the bottom of the seventh inning. Bottom of the order coming up. Sanchez, the number seven hitter. And a fair ball. How about that? Down the line. Berger's going to come in to score. And they're waving around De La Cruz. He'll score. Sanchez to third. And with the extra life, the Marlins finally show some offensively. Fortes, right center field. This one's hit pretty well. And it is going to one hop over the wall. Automatic RBI double Nick Fortes. Marlins cut that deficit in half. One ball, one strike to Jazz. Bouncing ball toward Abrams. The flip to Chavis on to first. It'll be an RBI ground out. No error. Can't assume the double play. Marlins get another run. It's now six to four. Would have been tough to turn because Chavis had momentum going the other way. Plus he had the speed of Jazz. We go to the eighth inning. The Nationals lead the Marlins six to four. Two consecutive hits for the Nats. Alex Call will be the batter. That's up the middle from Alex Call. Here comes Vargas. So the Nats get one of those runs back. It's seven four. There you go. Keep it moving. Bottom of the ninth inning here in Miami. And under Harvey is on to pitch. A chance to close tonight. And now the Marlins are down to their final out here tonight. Gonna bring up John Burr. And to the right side. Chavis has it. They did it. So do the Nats. They have finally beaten the Miami Marlins this year. So the struggles continue for the Marlins. The good times keep rolling for the Nats. Well, now 15 and 7 in August and 24 and 15 in the second half.